So as we record this, the consultation is about to start for the proceedings into getting divorced. And I, I must admit, I didn't realise exactly where we were on this. And Daphne, you're taking this through. Uh, you, you, you've had passion on this one to get this one sorted out. And Hazel, you're the advocate. We'll come to that in a second. Yes. Why have you been pushing this so hard? And, and it seems that you know, it's a private member's bill, right? So it's you. It is a private member's bill, but it's a piece of social legislation that's very important, but it's not going to appear on the government programme. Um, and from my involvement with the family court, on the island, I became aware that there was many, many reports that had suggested that this was the better option for the island and that a 50-year-old process that we currently use is not modern. I mean, it's, if you can get married eight days from going into the register office, um, but it takes a minimum of two years to take, become divorced. Take us through that, because you've got all the listings there. I mean, it's quite interesting to see how complicated it can be. Yeah, the, well, the statistics that have come out of our um, register office show, the Alman General Registry, that they're... Um, the number of people asking for five-year separation or two-year separation. That's if you both agree. But it, where there is um, um, a fault of either unreasonable behaviour or adultery, for instance, it, it, you can have a, a speedier divorce. And yet the suggestion is from all the research, and particularly the Scottish experience, in Scotland where they don't have fault-based divorce, there's only 6% put those grounds down. And the plan is similar to England, that we would bring forward a no-fault divorce, that for civil partnerships as well as marriage, people can jointly apply to say, usually after a quite a long process of discussion and um, anguish perhaps, that they've decided to divorce, that then they can start a process that if the, the bill goes forward in its current form, you could get divorced within six months more amicably and taking out that conflict that then can have a long-term negative impact on the couple and on any family involved. Well, you're on the coalface of this. I mean, Absolutely. you technically do get some couples, one doesn't want to get divorced, and it's, it's a long process as it stands. Uh, very rarely do we have a defended divorce. It has happened. It, it has happened in England. The case of Owens and Owens hit the headlines, uh, sharp focus then on fault divorce. That was an unreasonable behaviour divorce. And in the end, the judge and the appeal court said no, this lady had to remain married even though she didn't want to be and yeah. it seems to me that no fault divorce is a way of taking the sting out of a divorce that we so see so much rancor and mm -hmm. bitterness that goes with fault divorce somebody has to be to blame to get a quick divorce you need to blame somebody doesn't this keep you in business <coughs> sir? i mean you know, in day that's in what lawyers and advocates are there for family lawyers sign up or they should do if they're proper family lawyers to a code of ethics that means you do not make it worse for the separating parties you do not fuel the fires you try mediation you try consensual um, round table meetings you try to take the sting out of it and this no fault divorce would be a huge step in doing that at the moment if you want a quick divorce and let's face it most families cannot afford to be separated for two years without sorting out mm -hmm. the finances and the children and all the things that go with it they cannot afford to wait that time so somebody has to say, well, I will divorce you for a reason. Mm -hmm. And then we all have to dance around a maypole saying, this is the reason. And, and then that adds to bitterness. This is a bit of copy and pasting, I believe, on English law that's kind of got stuck, I yes. should imagine, with Brexit and everything, right? Yes, it was. We were quite fortunate. We'd already planned to do this. And, and Hazel has led a working party of a group of local family advocates that researched this for over a year and came forward with proposals. In the meantime, it was recognised in England that this puts potentially more honesty into the system and, it, and importantly the draft bill that we have before us lets people apply jointly for a divorce instead of one claiming, asking for a divorce against the, the other party. Um, but in, in England it has gone forward, it was at second reading and then when, government, when they prorogued Parliament oh. it was all going to fall but I am aware the Justice Committee wants to complete its passage through Westminster if possible so chances are we, we have always had similar legislation here concern with divorce to England and Wales so chances are that could continue. Well you're putting it out to consultation to the public now that is always dangerous because you can get uh, hardcore groups maybe that want to put their you know outside the sort of what people would normally expect as a consultation are you worried about that you might get a skew on this? 
Well, I think it's open for public consultation. It's open until the 2nd of January, and all views are welcome. We've deliberately put quite just a few questions, about about eight, um, with a lot of room for comments. So people who have experienced divorce or civil partnership um, dissolution, um, any experiences that are relevant that people want to tell us about, but also what do people generally feel? Do people think there should be a minimum time before you can get divorced? Do they think that there should be mediation and counselling built into the process? Do people think that um, it should be a five-year separation? It's what does the majority of the Isle of Man public want? That's what we're interested in finding out. Okay, well, again, back to you being right on the mm-hmm. cold face of this. Do you think it is going to make a big difference? It will make a, di- a big difference as far as uh, the uh, potential for conflict is concerned. The research, which has been on the books, this this point has been researched for years and years, for decades in the UK, law commissions, all recognising that the current system is wrong and causes difficulties. The the research shows that most parties who go through a fault divorce, uh, whether they're the person who's alleging the fault or the one who's on the receiving end, find that very uh, disruptive and and polarising of their positions. And so I think this will make a huge difference. Okay, well, consultation to the 2nd of January, when will, if it all goes what you want to hear and the consultation is correct and people want this, what sort of time scale we're talking about? Um, it depends how many responses we receive. Um, then three of us will go through and look at all the responses. We'll speak with the legislative drafters to see if any amendments are needed to the draft bill. Uh, and then hopefully within a month or two, we will, I will be bringing it before the House of Keys for the first reading. Okay, well, talking about spikes. This might produce a spike, might not it? Technically, <laughs> something people getting divorced quicker well all these people who've been waiting for two years yeah. will be able to apply immediately um, that that will help them financially and to, and to move on uh, in my view but that will be the only spike I think people I mean, will pe- people don't divorce readily they no. think about it really hard but, I mean I know people who've literally gone to the wire you know that final signature and then pulled back mm-hmm. so yeah. isn't in a sense sometimes time is a the thing to make people slow things down, put the brakes on. Well, I think they're, they're building in into, into the legislation. There will be a built-in cooling off, or right. or, or a period where you can sort everything out yeah. if you haven't already done so before the actual divorce the itself. Yeah, that's right. right. It, yeah, that's There's right. a. I think it's after 20 weeks you'll be sent notice to confirm that you want to proceed with the divorce. If there's we go, still with thinking the, time. So there's a period of uh, for reconsideration if that's what people want. But I think, like Hazel said, for the vast majority of people, they will ease the way, take out the conflict and the, the fallout on families that the current process put, builds in. And I, I, I think that in, in modern society, that if that's what most people want, then there should be the facility to do that through legislation. And with the UK being paroled or whatever else can happen there, could people in the UK come over here to get their divorce quickly or you, will that no. be no, 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 not that? possible? There's a jurisdictional point. Right. You, have to, you have to be here. So you're not going to be seen as the sort of no. Vegas in reverse. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's already, you can in Scotland, they, they don't have to... So, you know, and under the new legislation, they, you just wouldn't give one of the five facts the reasons for divorcing. You could apply singly or jointly to say that you're seeking a divorce and that would be a divorce order that would then be issued by the courts. Finally, have you got Coman, you know... Mr. Quayle and Co. on your side, I mean, is he happy with this one, or is it just going to be a free vote? Or what? It's, well, I'd hope it's 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 legislation, and it'll go before the House of Keys. So it's not government policy. So I would expect that people will vote according to their conscience and make any um, comments as they feel fit on on the legislation and what it's seeking to do, and any amendments that they feel are needed can be brought when, at the time when it goes through the branches. Mm-hmm.